Hi there, Neil Clark from Falkirk Piping, www.falkirkpiping.com Welcome to the channel, videos contained here are designed as aid memoirs for my pupils although they're free for anyone to use. If you're benefiting from the videos please subscribe to the channel, this is completely free to do. May I also ask that you consider supporting my chosen charity Parkinson's UK by donating to my Just Giving page the link to that can be found in the comments box below this video. This is lesson number 23 in our How to Learn the Bagpipes series and today concerns the jig the Glasgow City Police Pipers written by Pipe Major Donald MacLeod MBE. It's a very simple tune, much abused and is possibly the most guilty tune of running away with pipers, that is to say Piper speed it up and speed it up and speed it up until it becomes uncontrollable. For music today, I'm referencing Scots Guards Volume 2. I do make a few differences in that the score in Scots Guards Volume 2 is dotted and cut. Just to explain that, that means that the tune would go. However, in today's climate and for some years, it's, it's, it's very seldom that we actually hear the tune played dotted and cut. Uh, instead, we hear it played rounds. There's a couple of other differences from the book I'm going to show you. The tune is widely available. It's not in Donald MacLeod Book 1. That's a slightly different variation of the tune under the same name. Let's start with the tune itself, then I'll explain any differences that I'm going to put into the tune. So nice and slowly. Now, uh, first of all to explain, if you have a look at bar 1 in almost whatever music you're using, you will see that there is a G, D and E, and then the next note will be the C leading up to the high A. In your music, the grace note on that C may well be a G grace note. In fact, I think in 70-80% to 80 of sheet music of Glasgow City Police Pipers, it will be a G grace note. 
However, I learned this with a D grace note, and that's that's the way I'm going to uh, stick playing it. Uh, no problems at all if you're going to be using a G grace note leading up to that high A. So either. <laughs> Things you're liable to encounter in this tune, first of all, you will hear people who have learned the tune, at least partially by ear, they will mix up parts 1 and 3, because they're very similar, and they will also mix up parts 2 and 4. Now, to be honest, there's not much of a difference between parts 2 and 4 anyway, but it is important to get the difference. It's a bit of a giveaway if you play the wrong note at the end of the line. The other thing with this tune, it does lend itself to crossing noises in several different places. And in the second part. And I'm sure you could find other places to make crossing noises as well. So, for that reason alone, it's a very useful tune to learn, it's almost a must-play jig, it's a crowd pleaser, and it's one you can trot out without too, uh, too many problems uh, at the drop of a hat. Let's get on to the tune now in part number one, uh, just to restate again, remember that I'm playing this round, if you have a dotted and cut version, then feel free to dot and cut the notes, uh, and 98% of the time I hear this tune it's played round. Uh, the, the, the other thing I believe I've also mentioned, just do not try and not let this tune speed up. You'll find if you can play this tune, like others, but this tune in particular, if you can play this tune accurately, slowly and consistently, you will have no problems whatsoever speeding this tune up almost as much as you like. So let's have a look at the first part. The first part really consists of G, D and E movements, followed by a connecting note, note up to a high A and a further connecting note back down to the second G, D and E movements. The second last and last bars in this tune never change. So they're the same throughout. Let's have a look at this then. Uh, on A, a joining note of C with either a D or a G, grace note to C, up to high A and back down to C before a G, D and E, on B, connecting note of C again, back up to the high A strike. Now remember, the high A strike, if you're playing this tune even, the high A strike must be even as well. Don't go. <laughs> Everything must be slow and controlled, and that's why I quite like this tune. Incidentally, this tune was really the reason that I went back to circular breathing. I was demonstrating it slowly, and uh, I just could not find a place that was convenient to, to take a breath. So I went back to circular breathing, and it's kind of stuck with me ever since. It was purely by accident, uh, not by choice. Now let's have a look at that phrase again. A shot at that. Another thing to note in here, when you come off that low A at the end of the G, D and E movement, the D grace note to C in itself can lead to a small crossing noise. That's when the A goes down before the D comes up for the grace note to C. So be aware of that and try and avoid it. The full line now, very repetitive, we're only really going to change in the last three notes, which are as a run from A, sorry, from F, E down to C, which must also be even. A 
rigidly even there. That sounds a bit uh, a bit pedantic, but as a matter of fact, if you learn it like that, then you can progress it as fast as you like, very quickly indeed. So let's continue to part uh, line two of part number one. The first two bars are exactly the same as the bars above. At the end of bar two, we're going to stay on high A and strike it. Let's take you there from the start of line two of part one. Remember, in bar number three there, please give that high A its full value. Just as everything has been in threes before that and has to be rigid, that single high A has to get its correct value as well, otherwise the impression is usually given of the tune speeding up. Now that part is repeated as are all the other parts. Let's play the part in full and then we'll give you an opportunity to pause the, the video and try this for yourself. Now what I find in there, because of course the grace notes have to be even and consistent as well, the easiest way that I find to do that is to make the grace notes reasonably big. Now obviously when I'm playing at that speed, they do appear exaggerated and they are, but when you move up a little and play the tune in proper jig time, whatever that is, then the grace notes will diminish in length and be consistent with the tune at a faster speed. If you wish now, please pause the video and try part one, noting these points that I've brought up. If you've stopped the video, welcome back. This is part number two. Part number two and part number four are really the favourites of most people in this tune. That's because you can absolutely tear through them. They're quite easy. But please remember, they must be controlled. Guard against crossing noises. Make sure your grace notes are in the proper place. Your high A strengths are even and probably other stuff too. I'm not going to spend too much time in this part. You're going to start on a, a, an F up to a high A strike, E high A strike, C high A strike, and down to low A. And that's the difference between part two and part four. Part four is slightly different. So, let's just go through this. Now also in, in this part, please be careful of false notes. If you're coming from the bottom hand to the top hand, remember that your low A must be up. Let's have a look at this then. Uh, we're actually going to use the high A strike at the end of part number one to go into this. Makes it slightly more realistic and it gets you the balance straight away. Starting on an F, down to low A at the end of the first phrase or the end of the second bar. Starting on an F in bar 3 and finishing on a B at the end of bar number 4. Remember, between line 2, bars 2 and 3, you have two high A strikes, three high A's in total. Please make them totally even.
The second part, if you haven't begun to rush in part one already, is the part where things can begin to speed up. Please be disciplined and control this part. You still have two parts to go, and part three is possibly the most intricate in the tune. Let's have a quick look again at part number two, again starting with the two high A's at the end of part number one. Guard against crossing noises, particularly in the E to high A. That's where the E comes down before the high A comes up. Your hand will be off the chanter uh, to catch that for oh, 0 0.01 of a second or something like that, even at slow speed. But do not false finger, please don't false finger, don't catch if you can help it at all. If you wish, please pause the video now and try part two nice and slowly. Welcome back. We're now going to have a look at part three. This is where we come into our first similarity. The similarity is between part three and part one. But there's probably more going on in part three. We're from, uh, from bottom to top all the time. Uh, when we fit, first hit the triplets, the low A and the triplets, the G, D and E, there is no G grace note in the majority of them. Again, to demonstrate, we're going to come onto this part using the high A strike from the end of part number two. <laughs> the first line. The secret of that, play the thing nice and slow, very very even and rigidly stick to these note lengths and you should not give the impression that the tune is speeding up. There's not really a lot to add on this, it's just please remember the differences between this part, part three and part one and don't let the muscle memory creep back in so you end up either playing a mix and match of the two or indeed playing part one as part three. Watch the D grace notes coming up to the high A strike and remember coming back down off the high A to the next G, D and E you cannot put a G grace note in so please don't try, don't go We do hear that, uh, guard against that. So, relatively simple part Try and not false finger, make your grace notes nice and big, everything nice and even, and no false notes, uh, no crossing noises, sorry. Taking that part from the end of part two. Pause the video now if you wish and practice part number three. Welcome back if you were away. We're now on to part number four. And really, if you read music at all, then part number four may not require much explanation. If you don't read music, it most certainly does, as this is where you're likely to just repeat part number two. We come from an F in part four, as we do in part number two. However, at the end of the phrase, the last bottom hand note in bar two is a B and not an A. Moving along to bar four, the end of the line, it's an E and not a B. Likewise, in bars 
5 and 6 in line 2. It's a B and not an A. Please don't confuse the two. The same thing to guard against, really, in part number 4, as we were cautious of in part number 2. We are coming up to high A all the time, both from the top hand and the bottom hand. Please guard against crossing noises and also against false notes. I'm just going to go straight through this. Please note the, the note at the end of the phrases, the two bar phrases. What we have here, using the high A strike from part number three to start us off. That's part number four, and please, if uh, you're happy with that, please pause the video and practice part number four now. Do not try and speed up. How many times have I said that? If uh, I was physically in front of you, I'd be saying that all the time as well. Uh, now's the time to remind you that if you are benefiting from these videos, and even if you're not, may I also ask that you consider supporting my chosen charity, Parkinson's UK, by donating to my Just Giving page. The link can be found in the comments box below this video. This is the 5th of August 2019 and the, uh, the charity drive is actually intended to go for at least four or five years yet. So it's a slow drip thing. Uh, every new video that I do, I will include an appeal in it. Please consider uh, contributing. My father uh, was a piper as well, as was my grandfather. But my dad has Parkinson's and that's why I'm on the drive to, to raise money for Parkinson's UK. So after that little waffle there, all that really remains is uh, to play the tune again. And I think we'll speed things up a little this time. You're not going to be getting it full speed, but uh, this will give you more of an idea of how it should go. Please, once more, also remember that <clears throat> in part number one, uh, bar number one, part number one, the C going up to the high A there, I'm using a D grace note on there. You may well be using a G grace note. That's absolutely fine. What not to do is mix and match. So, this has been lesson number 23 in our How to Learn the Bagpipes series. And uh, thanks very much for watching. Mm -hmm.